in Studio City, California. Let's take a look at the family we've got here. Hi, we're the Newton family. I'm Wendy. And I'm Dan. Hi. And we have four kids. I'm from the band Wilson Phillips, and um, in the early 1990s, we did concerts around the world. People think that I have a glamorous lifestyle, but it's really not. I am a housewife and a mom. We live and breathe children, and that's what we do. <laughs> Leo is four, Bo is three. And Will and Jesse are twins, and they are six weeks old. <laughs> Going from two to four kids overnight is a whirlwind. Well, I gotta feed the babies. I'm in shock. No, 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 no. It's like a circus here. You know, they're wild. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. They get rambunctious. Whoa, hey. Uh, 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 and they get loud. <laughs> you add twins to the mix, and it's just absolute lunacy sometimes. <laughs> so in musical terms, this family would be slightly off-key. The way I grew up was the polar opposite to the way Wendy grew up. My father, Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys, when I was growing up, wasn't around, you know, for the most part. He just wasn't able to parent my sister and I. We were allowed to do almost anything we wanted to do as children. I think that structure was, was missing in the household. I think that that influenced me because I tend to be more liberal with my children, and Dan is just quite the opposite of me. And, um, you know, it, it does come into play with our parenting, and we do have conflicts because of that. Hey, don't throw an apple on the floor. I smell poo poo. What are you talking about? You smell poo poo. Do you have poo poo? No. He's got poo poo. In his underwear? Again? You got some poo-poo in there, buddy. Before the babies arrived, I was resolved that Bo, our three-year-old, was going to get potty trained. You got to go poo-poo on the potty. Oh, my god. He refused. Now there's poo-poo in the water. Usually when he hides behind that table, he's going poo. Yeah, I'm over this. Look at this cheeky monkey. He's springing a leak in the backyard. And then bedtime, I'd like to see Wendy be able to put them into bed and be able to come out and let them fall asleep on their own. Mom. And then between 12 and 2 a.m., they make their way to our bedroom. Now that we have our twins, uh, it's hard to get any quality sleep at all. It's an hour past your bedtime, buddy. I tend to baby the kids. I'm just going to move your bed right into their room. Well, this family certainly needs some rest. That's for sure. Oh, jeez. In a couple of months, my sister and I have shows planned that we're going to do around the country. I'm just a little concerned about not being with my older kids for, for that amount of time, because I've never done that before. How are you tonight? We've got some dates lined up, and four children is not easy, and two newborns. Dan's working, she's going to work, we're all working. So this is the challenge. Mom! Super Nanny. We, we're overwhelmed. Please help us uh, handle our children. Mom and Dad, you certainly got your hands full. I'm on my way to help. Hello. Hi. How are you? How are you? Good. Pleased to meet you. I'm Joe. Nice, nice. You know, as far as I was concerned, I was going in to help a family, regardless to whether they'd been in the limelight or not. I was welcomed very warmly by Wendy and Dan, which was lovely. So, two yeah. toddlers, yeah. twins. Yeah. Quite a bit, right? Oh, yeah. Lots to sort out and lots to be done. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to have two young active boys, but to have newborns as well, it puts Wendy into one of the toughest challenges a parent could ever be in. Leo and Bo, I am talking to you right now. The first thing that I see is the boys riding outside and mum desperately trying to get them inside, but they're just ignoring her. Hey, stop. Stop. If you guys don't stop, you're going to go to a timeout. I felt extremely mortified. I have to be honest with you. I was like, my kids are not listening to me, and I don't have the respect that I should have for my children. Leo. This is very embarrassing. I believe that, that the way you're raised influences the way you parent. I was raised with a very unstructured type of lifestyle. We were allowed to do almost anything we wanted to do as children. Let's start putting puzzles away, okay? You want to help me? Come on. Come on. 
I love the fact that Wendy admits that she's a pushover and that when the boys play up, she leaves it up to Dan to deal with the discipline. Hey, Leo, you need to start picking up. If you don't start picking up at the count of three, then you're going to have to have a timeout because okay. this is getting silly. Let's get moving, please. Thank you very much. Now get that puzzle put in its box and don't stop until you're finished. Wendy and Dan both have very different parenting styles and that's okay, but I knew that I would have to get them on the same page if they were going to see eye to eye. I, I do try to implement, you know, discipline with the kids, but I know that I, I can be pushed. Yeah. I'm the pushover and he's the more strict parent. Yeah, I have less tolerance, definitely. So I, I know that that's something I need to work on. Has there been any regression? Yes, there has been regression, yes. We got Bo to the point with potty training where he was going on the potty, you know, every day, and then he started going in his underwear. Regression is very common with toddlers when there are newborns around. It's basically when the older child goes back to behaving how they did when they were younger. And no sooner had Wendy told me about Bo's potty training problems, Dan caught him in the act. What are you doing in the office? Come on out of there. Please go away from me. Are you going poo poo? No. Let's go on the potty. Hey, Dad. Let's go to the potty. <laughs> oh, you have to Buddy, go away. Buddy, I think you're going poo poo right now. Come I'm on, let's go to the potty. I am almost, Please. I am almost done. Dan hates changing diapers. I mean, it makes him gag. Oh, Bowie. <laughs> oh, boy. This is horrifying, buddy. <laughs> These aren't real accidents that Bo is having because he's already been potty trained. He's just regressing because he knows he can get mum and dad's attention because right now they're giving it all to the newborns. You know what? If you didn't have man-sized poops, it wouldn't be so disgusting. I'm looking at what I see around me. I mean, you're a very successful, talented woman in the music industry and is there is there a piece of you that wants to get back out there doing it? To be honest with you, my children are going to be my priority forever. You know that comes first mm -hmm. for me now. But I do want to do something, and I want. I mean, my sister and I are planning on doing shows this winter, okay. and mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun, and it makes me feel great to be performing again. You know, working, and and that's another aspect of myself that I don't get to see very often. I went from career woman to full time mommy. But I do have an itch to work again as well. Because I need, I need time for myself too, and it's important. And, and when I work, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to be away from them for a little while. I mean, the, I already know myself. Once I start rehearsing, I'm going to feel guilty that I haven't been with my children. Even if it's a couple hours, I start feeling that guilt feeling, that trepidation. No, I'm really excited for Wendy because she's excited about going back on the road and, and doing what she's passionate about with her music and that brings more and more to the forefront of how they need to get things organised and in place so that she can feel confident about doing that. So, Hannah, what happens around this kind of time? You know, is it just, do you just grab your brakes when you can or, you know, is there any kind of structure or any kind of Not routine? really. I mean... I'd spent the best part of a day with this family and it seemed like there was no set time for anything with regards to the kids or the newborns and that they just kind of did things when they felt it should be done. Are you hungry? Did you eat? You I, didn't eat, okay. Maybe we should plan dinner. Yeah, you know what, I gotta cook dinner. What am I thinking? I wonder if I should bathe them and then have bottles ready. That would just be a little too much for right now, I think. Wendy and Dan haven't kept track of the baby's feeding schedule throughout the day. When was the last time they were fed? Um, was it 10? What time are the babies supposed to eat? Who knows at this point? That's what I'm saying, I yeah. forgot. When are your babies due for their feed? Apparently soon. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Typically, a lack of routine will follow into bedtime. And now what we're seeing is the kids get up in the middle of the night to go into their mum and dad's bedroom. So what time do the kids normally go to bed? Eight. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We try for eight. That's their bedtime. We, we call it a soft eight. A soft eight. Yeah. So then what time would you say early hours in the morning you have company? Two or three. Two or three. So two yeah. or three, you fill a foot in your face. 
Uh-huh. Oh yeah. There you go. I've been kicked in the head so many times in the middle of the night. Oh boy. It's tough enough when you're getting up in the middle of the night because you've got babies who constantly need to feed. But now mum and dad have got boys who are jumping into their bed as well. This family need to sleep. Bedtime, boys. Bedtime. Time to go to bed. To your bed. You know what? I can't find your pacifier because it's not where we asked you to leave it today. Do you know where one of your pacifiers is? First, mum and dad had to hunt high and low for Bo's pacifier, something I think a three-year-old shouldn't have anyway. <laughs> This is working out great. Damn, this is very odd. I don't see them. So if you don't remember where the passy is, that's it. You're out here hunting. Yeah, it's pretty much who it's come to this before. I know, I know. I know that you want passy. I know that. Found one. Ah, the Achilles heel of bedtime. Once Bo got his pacifier, he went straight off to sleep. But then I saw Leo demanding more time for mum. And let's face it, we've still got two babies to deal with. You must chill. Okay? I'll be back soon to check on you. Wendy feels really guilty about leaving Leo alone, so she engages him. What she must do is set limits, leave the room, and not allow Leo to make her feel so bad. I love you. One more kiss, one more kiss. We can only hope for him to just finally, you know, fall off into oblivion. You mommy, come here. You're taking a long time. I have my hands full with so many children that I don't have, I don't, it's like I can't, I don't have time for all my children at once. You know, I have to pick. So we have a family here that have got no routine, little discipline, and not much sleep. So I'm going to head off for the night and make sure that I come back with a good plan for mum and dad. Get as much sleep as you possibly can in between feeds <laughs> so that we can have a good chat tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, it's been a very good observation day. Thank you for everything. You. Okay. This family's got a lot of love in it and really good principles for them moving forward. But there's a lot that's got to be put in place if mum's to feel good about going on tour. So what I want to start off talking to you both about is structure, mm -hmm. all right? Structure, you mentioned, is something that you both have been very uh, free with. However, that lack of structure hasn't led to you now as parents to have framework with your own kids. There is no consistency. Well, the, the key to being able to have the consistency is a routine because it relates to so many different things. It relates to a consistency with sleeping. It relates to meal times, and that is also linked with behavior. So you see everything fits into a puzzle. And the boys do need structure, and they're not brilliant at wanting to listen. They've got selective hearing. Yeah, they really do. Mm -hmm. They are blatantly ignoring you. But if you think they're doing that now at four and three, what do you think they're gonna do when they're six, Wendy? because you've both got very strong opinions and, and views of how you were raised and what you feel is necessary, but neither one is, is willing to step back or to push forward. And that's where we get the good cop, the bad cop. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Where do we find that happy medium for us? And that's something that I'm definitely going to be doing with the pair of you throughout our teaching. Now, obviously, the, the newborns have come into the family and, and the boys are, are wondering where they are in the mix of all of this. You know, oh, we were the apple here and we've fallen off the cart, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's adjustment for everyone, not only for yourselves, but for the toddlers as well. And what we see is the potty training. It's not something that we have to over be dramatic about, but it's there. It's a natural thing for some children that occurs when there are new additions into the family. But the pacifier can definitely say, we'll need to go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just thinking about him makes me laugh sometimes. <laughs> no, me too. So I'm feeling really positive about the things that can be done here. We up That's for it? Good. Oh We're yeah. Ready? Yes. We better start some work then. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay.
Wendy was raised with an inconsistent routine and that suited her family down to the ground. But with her own kids, she needs to establish a consistent routine. So let's place in our routine here, one of those cornerstones, which are the kids' meal times. All right. Seeing the schedule and makes me know that we don't have to live in the chaos anymore. The baby's first feed is at what time in the morning? Oh, six. Six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Up here was a lot of clutter. And when they started to place down on paper how they could help themselves, it started to empower them. What's an ideal time for dinner? I say six. But it's not like a sit-down formal thing. I would for the children. Right. If the children haven't eaten, uh -huh. I would get into the habit of having them at the table. Okay. What are your thoughts on that? That sounds like, that sounds like it's pushing it in the right direction because that's certainly something I, I've noticed that when I grew up, my parents wanted me home for dinner. You know, it was very important. Yeah, and I had the opposite. We didn't really sit down for dinner. I mean, my, my mom did with us, but it was never a family ordeal. I was raised with a very unstructured type of lifestyle. My father is Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys, and um, my dad was, was pretty much absent. Whether he was home or not, he was absent. So, you know, we were craving normalcy. So, Thank let's go you. and stick it up and make it happen. You did really well. Very cool. You Thank did really you so well. Much. When we made the, the day schedule, it really became apparent, you know, how we were gonna make our lives sane. Once we had finished work on the family routine, Wendy's sister, Carney, came around to rehearse. Oh, hi, Karn. Hi. Hey. Oh, hi there. Hi, everybody. And she brought over her little girl. This is my daughter, Lola. Hi, Lola. Lola, look, it's Jojo. Can you say hi to Jojo? Hi, Lola. Pleased to meet you. Wendy and Carney needed time to rehearse, so it gave Dan the opportunity to bite the bullet and give the girls the quiet time that they needed. So plan of action, we've got all these kids and what we want to do is set up something for the kids to be able to do perhaps in the backyard or in here. When I was uh, prompted to go watch, you know, the children, I definitely felt, you know, this is a situation that I have not been put in before. Oh, I'm alone with y'all. What key are we in? You guys doing okay? And, and who's doing Melody, me or you? Me. Okay. Well, first of all, I've never been in that living room without screaming children running around. It was probably the first time we had any quiet time on there. It was almost awkward. Uh, oh, oh, shoot. Oh, no, God. Oh, no. oh it Lord. modulates, right? Modulates? Yeah. Um, well, there wasn't really a lot of interaction with our father as a child. Carney and I would try to play piano with him, you know, and he would teach us little things. And that's pretty much our real connection in life. Don't you know, things have changed, things are going away If you hold on for one more day You guys are gonna, you're gonna need sunblock, aren't you? What do you got going on? I was expecting a little bit more trouble from the whole lot of them than really ever materialized. One hippo to one Passion. kid. It was refreshing to have that moment to myself and to be with my sister and, and do what I do. Because that's a passion of mine and that I've kind of pushed under the rug and I oh, think I, I need to embrace that a little bit again. Before I went home for the night, I wanted to tackle Bo's attachment with his pacifier. There's no need for him to have a pacifier. He has a blankie and it's an emotional crutch really for him. Oh. This is going to be heartbreaking for me, I have to tell you. When she said that we're going to have to, you know, break the habit of the pacifier, I had no idea what she was going to do. Bo, this envelope came from somebody very special, and her name is Penelope, the Passy Fairy. Okay, and when she sees that there are boys in the house that are very big boys, and they have passies, what she does is that she asks them, okay, Wait, to put their passies into the very special envelope and to post it so that she could give them to babies that would need them. No. And he kind of looked at me and I thought to myself, is he gonna do this or not? I didn't know if he was really gonna pick up those passies. Look at you, Penelope's gonna be so pleased. Seal that down nice and tightly. I was really excited that he was just really engulfed in this whole story. You're gonna put it in the mailbox? When he took those pacifiers to the mailbox, I just felt very proud of him. 
he's growing up when he does that. Yes! It, it felt like we were in, in a storybook. And it's in the morning, you're going to go to the mailbox and you're going to get at your very special own envelope. You know, it just goes to show you when you're really confident and you can bring a touch of magic into the situation, that they actually take that in their own stride and know that everything must be okay then. Lisa, crack it! Ready? One, two, three, go! Go, 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 When I arrived the next day, I was curious to see how Bo had slept without his pacifier, so I asked Mum. I was in last night. Great. Well, I'm watching it once. We had a sad face, but then he went back to bed. It was a good visit. Bo, have you been outside? Bo, Penelope, the fairy's been here. Go and have a look. And he went outside and he saw all the feathers and the glitter. He's like, oh, the fairies. Oh. oh my gosh. And when he opened up the mailbox and saw that parcel, his little face, he was so excited that he'd been left something. Here, I'll help you. Animals. There, you can go. Wow. Animals. Animals. The fact that Joe was able to get him to part with those pacifiers, I, I bow down to Joe. I was pretty surprised that she was able to do it. Pacifier gone, it was time to get Wendy and Dan on the same page with regards to how they were going to discipline the boys. And to do that, they need to discuss the limitations they feel as parents because they both had different upbringings. So what we are going to do today is to write down the things that we feel limit us. I've never done anything like that before, but my children are at stake here. I want to have control over the kids and always have but in such a way that I don't end up being the bad guy or the sergeant. I feel that in the end, I'm going to alienate my kids to some degree. And I wouldn't want that. Why? Because it happened in my life. So your limitation here would be the word control. Any that comes to mind with yourself, Wendy? Well, I mean, there was no consistency and, and hardly any boundaries in my family. So. That led you to feel what as a child? It made me feel a little like um, lost and out of control. Insecure. That's the insecure. Worst. That's the worst. Insecure. I'm constantly trying to make sure I do everything that I'm supposed to do as a mother. And I don't want to mess up. Um, so to please for everything. Though. Yeah. Needing for the children to, to accept me or acceptance, you know? Acceptance. That's the one that had to do mostly with um, with my relationship with my parents? Well, first of all, when you have one, one parent not there, you want their approval and their acceptance. My father is Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys, and um, he's sold millions and millions of records in his time. Growing up was fun. I mean, we got to go on tour, but it was also very lonely at times because we grew up in a really huge home and my dad was, was pretty much absent. Whether he was home or not, he was absent. So it was hard for us because we really lacked that fatherly love and that figure in our lives. With my father, I guess I never got the validation that I needed. Hmm. Yeah, he's a very elusive, you know, person. I think that the world got more from Brian Wilson than I did, yeah. I mean, but I kind of realized that he just wasn't able to do everything and that's what he focused on. I've really moved on, honestly, you know, and I don't, I don't dwell on things like that. I'm not as judgmental because now I see it through my children and I feel like I can forgive. I guess in the beginning of the exercise, I thought, how is this relevant to our situation? Why do we have to get so sappy right now? But then I realized that it really was crucial and essential to the whole process we're going through.
Getting Wendy to really open up about how lonely she felt as a child really helped her to realise how difficult it is to leave her own boys at bedtime. Can I put your pirate pyjamas on? You could say that I'm a little anxious about it, but we really need our bed back and our, and our sleep back. These lights off, Mum. I knew that if Wendy understood the importance of the boys sleeping in their own beds, then she just might pull herself away and it would make bedtime a lot easier. I want you, Mummy. If they really want you now, okay, what they're going to do is they're going to come out. Mommy. You're then going to do the stay in bed technique, which is to take them back into their beds and say, it's bedtime, darling. The second time they come out, you say bedtime and put them back in. And the third time you say nothing and you take them straight back into their bed. Okay, so that they're not rewarded with communication because there has to be a cut-off limit, you know. Bedtime is bedtime now. It's you. So remember, no conversation, okay? What's the first thing we say? Bedtime, darling. Bedtime, darling. <laughs> okay. So this is what's going on right now. They're in their beds and they're used to calling, calling, calling all the time and you going in. Wendy was strong and she simply led them straight back to bed. And even though they cried, within 20 minutes they were fast asleep. The question remains, however, will they get up and go into their mum and dad's bed? So I curled up on the couch to find out. Good night. Good night. Are you sure I can, can I get you anything? I'm fine. It's like nanny steak out. <laughs> when I went to bed, um, I was dreading the whole process because I knew that, you know, this was going to be like cold turkey for them. You know, I knew that they were going to have to actually sleep in their beds the whole night. Sure enough, Leo and Bo got up and headed to their mum and dad's bedroom. However, as tough as it was for Wendy, she led them straight back into their bedroom. So it was a major victory for this family. <laughs> you know, it was hard for me. It was really hard for me, to be honest. I had to change my ways and do it. And it was, it was for the best, and I'm glad I did it. It's the first time in a long time they've slept in their own beds. I know, I know. Yeah, I think they're gonna sleep better too. The last time Dan and I slept alone, I can't even remember, to be honest with you. With this family snug in bed, it was time for me to leave. But if mum and dad don't keep up what we've put in place, then it just might come tumbling down. But only time will tell. After leaving Wendy and Dan alone for four days, I was eager to see how they did. It's my favourite part. My friend. So, are you? Uh, hmm, let's take a look. Okay, time for bed. Oh. In your bed now. Get in your bed now. Bo, Bo, you put that book down right now. Bo, look at me. Only mom are both. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Then lay down. <laughs> Sleep well. It works. What a marked improvement, huh? Incredible, really. I just love the way you've just been able to, you know, switch and change. You've gone from being very calm and reading stories, and as soon as they get up out of bed, you change your tone. You say, no, come on, that's enough. Well done, pair of you. Well done. Come on, guys. Don't I argue. Know. Just do it together. Leah wanted to do it the other way. Hey, mommy, I don't want to do it. Oh, my goodness. Get Go to your timeout right now. Daddy. You do not hit your brother ever. Mommy. You never hit him like Mommy, that. Never. You're gonna stay in this chair because you hit your brother. I put you in this timeout because you hit your brother. And that was not acceptable. Now you're gonna you go apologize to your brother. No. Alright, thank you for doing that, Leah. Of course, she did the right thing. He hit his brother. Of course, he was going to go on that naughty chair. So Leo and Bo recognise I do this and I end up in timeout on the naughty chair. Very good. Thank you. Well, 
Well, I'm feeling frazzled because I'm not getting enough rest. We're trying to stay on the schedule, but the babies are making their own schedule. So I'm figuring 10.45, maybe we'll feed the twins. I wouldn't necessarily wake them up to feed, because if they can end up on that 12, 3, 6, 9 schedule, that would be best. Okay. All right. This is proof that I really uh, I have a big question mark over my head. I want to get on schedule, I don't know how. When I did your schedule, it's a free hourly feed. So they're going to start to sleep longer during the night and go through with that. And if it means that they wake up at seven, great. You're going to start your free hours from then. We still have really tried to stick to the schedule and even if we're off a half hour, it still seems to be like a wonderful thing, you know? And it's been really, it's been great for us. For two people that had no schedule, it's been good for the pair of you with kids, right? Even with the schedule, it, it's very a demanding mm. day, mm. but yes. still, it makes it a little more doable. Mm. Do you have poo-poo in your diaper? No. Nope. Really? Mm -hmm. Let me have a look, okay? Because if you're dirty, I want to change you. You have a big load in your diaper. Mm -hmm. Let's take off the dirty diaper. Come on. This is where diapers are changed. Look, why? And you're wearing a diaper. I'm wearing a diaper. Why? It's because you demand that you're not going to go poo poo on the potty. Okay, Ralph, we're good at that now, Dan. <laughs> yeah. So we need to start the slate clean again with this. And what I'm going to do is just very clearly give you some guidelines that I want you to just be able to start from the beginning and finish. Okay. So I'm gonna be working on those particular things with you and I'm gonna be tweaking everything. So are we good with what we've seen? Yes. Yep, any questions? Right, okay, so I'm eager to get cracking, so let's go. Okay. Mum and Dad have become more confident, so I wanna be able to show them how they can step outside the box and handle any situation if it arises. This is what we're going to do. We're going to have an experience of taking the whole family to a restaurant. I'm gonna go One of my bigger fears with having four children is going out to dinner. I'm going to teach you guys on the get-go once we're there. Things that are going to make it easier for you all to go as a family to the restaurant. Dan was actually worried he could feel himself getting tense. Like, what is this going to be like? They're so quiet, maybe they should hang out all and right. eat their bottles Let's on go. the sidewalk with the traffic. <laughs> so we pulled up to the restaurant and I could see that Dan was a little nervous. So the first thing that we could do is set up expectations. So Leo, Bo, we'd like you guys to stay in your seats, okay? We don't want you running around and we don't want you yelling out and making big noises, okay? For Dan, it's more about he, he doesn't want to disturb other people. <laughs> don't do what that kid just did. <laughs> Lemonade too. Lemonade? Okay, thank you. Bowie, I don't want you to play with the silver anymore. Yes, please. Bo, oh. please don't make any loud noises. Hey, let's not play. Can you can you sit and just be without playing? By implementing the direct talking approach, you know, you get down and you look at your kid in the eye and you tell him what you're expecting of him. That that makes all the difference. I need some more Oh boy! Somebody will come over. I just want you to remain calm about it because at the end of the day, that's what happens. Yeah. Well, your choice is this. Sit still and be quiet, or you can eat your quesadilla. After Dan had to tell Bo to behave himself a few times, he had to make it very clear that throwing silverware was not on the menu. Your right now. This is your last chance. This is your last chance to, to do what we're asking. Firm voice, Dan. Now you sit straight in your chair, and you stop playing with silverware, and you eat your quesadilla. I was proud of how Dan spoke sternly and directly to Bo. And I know that as long as this family are armed with techniques, then they're always gonna be able to eat out in a restaurant with confidence and in peace. Dan, what came out of today? Give me all the positives that have come out of the experience of being in a restaurant today. Um, well, I think that Wendy and I are learning how to handle situations that arise every time we go out to eat. Yes. And we're, we're gonna get to a, a point where they know that we actually mean business and we're gonna be consistent with, with the things that we tell them. Before Joe gave us the tools to work with those things, it would have just degenerated into, don't do this, don't do it. Hey, stop doing that, pick that up. Why'd you, you know? And we would have gotten nowhere. It would have been just, you know, a constant struggle. This family have done extremely well. 
But the one thing that I haven't been able to address yet is Bo's potty habits. So I want to be able to lead them with a few tips for when I'm gone. He feels ashamed now. Oh, he lies because he doesn't want to get into trouble. And that's because we've gone the route of being nice and then scolding him for doing that, you know? He speak to Bo. Like the big boy he is, because he's very capable and able to go to the toilet. No doing poo-poos in your pants. You're a big boy now, OK? Yeah, so that he realises that you know that he can do... You're going to go to the party? Are you going to go to the party? No. Just after I explained it, Bo got up and he marched straight into the bathroom. It was great and a real surprise. Oh, my goodness. You're on the potty. What a big boy. He, he surprised me by getting in there and doing his business. Yay! Wow, Bowie. Well done. My little Bo listens to everything, and he wanted to show everybody what a big boy he was, and I was so proud of him. I really was. Well, I'm going to leave you guys. Just keep up the work. Okay. All right. Just keep yeah. up the work and give me a big hug. Thank you. Joe changed our lives. We've really been given tools to really help our family. Give us a hug, Dan. Thank you. Joe really helped us a lot already, and I'm looking forward to reaping the rewards in the future. Mm. And a hug. Give a hug. Hey, you live and you learn. Wendy and Dan were both raised very differently, but it hasn't stopped them from recognizing what they need to do for their own family. And that's what's important. They make a great team. Take care. Take care. Bye, boys. Bye-bye. It's been such a rewarding experience for us and um, meeting Joe, and I think we've, we've gained so much from this. And uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Definitely noticing a change in my family, um, specifically Leo and Bo. The boys have grown immensely in this, such a short period of time. It's incredible. <laughs> we have grown because we had to look within and see how we parent and how we're affecting our children. Are you going to play in the sand too? I really appreciate the way that she related to Wendy because Wendy really, really needs that kind of a person. If you were my duckling and I were your mama duck, I'd paddle toward the shore at sunset and you'd follow right behind. I really do believe that we're going to continue with this journey that we're on with the boys. I think it's working for us. I mean, why, why stop a good thing, you know? One more story and then it's lights out. Really, she's set us on a path to success in a, in a lot of ways because it's all there if, if you're ready to learn. Overall, it's, it's just a huge positive.